the other land instead of the zoology. After studying the lands, Charles became convinced that the strata was laid down over millions of years. Charles was inspired by the writings of Charles Lyell on geology. While reading it, Charles decided that the uniformitarian view was correct. Charles grew farther and farther from God. However, Charles himself said, whilst on board the Beagle, I was quite orthodox, and I remember being heartily laughed at by several of the officers of themselves orthodox for quoting the Bible as an unanswerable authority on some point of morality. I suppose it was the novelty of the argument that amused them. Well, Charles later decided that the Bible was false and decided to reject scripture altogether. After the Beagle, the voyage ended on October 2nd, 1836. Darwin began processing the species men he had collected. He also began considering spiritual things. He said, during these two years, I was led to think much more about religion. However, he didn't grow any closer to God. In January 1839, Darwin married his first cousin, Emma. Emma was a very religious woman and was quite concerned about the state of his husband. Darwin said that before I was engaged to be married, my father advised me to conceal carefully my doubts. Some women suffered miserably by doubting about the salvation of their husbands. Death and suffering. Something that was really heavy in Darwin's life was his struggle with death and suffering. He saw everywhere struggle, disease, and death. Darwin started doubting more and more that a caring God existed. Darwin said, I cannot persuade myself that a beneficent and omnipotent God would have designedly created the Lumicon, sorry, um, Iconumonidae with the express intention of their feeding within the living bodies of caterpillars or that a cat should play with mice. Darwin said, the very old argument from the existence of suffering against the existence of an intelligent first cause seems to be a strong one. Whereas, as just remarked, the presence, the presence of much suffering agrees well with the views that all organic things have been developed through variation and natural selection. Let's continue death and suffering. So Darwin concluded that if there is death and suffering, then a caring God doesn't exist. Why did God create creatures to kill each other? This suddenly became very personal to Darwin when his 10-year-old daughter Annie died. He said, poor dear Annie, was taken with a vomiting attack, which at first thought of the smallest important, but it rapidly assumed the form of a low and dreadful fever, which carried her off in 10 days. Thank God she hardly suffered at all. She was my favorite child, poor dear little soul. Life and faith. In Darwin's life, he did consider issues of spirituality. He struggled with inconsistencies he saw. He said, my theory, sorry, my theology is a simple muddle. I cannot look at the universe as the result of blind chance. Yet I have seen no evidence of beneficent design or indeed of design of any kind in the details. He also wrote, when thus reflecting, I feel compelled to look to a first cause having an intelligent mind in some degree analogous to that of man. And I deserve to be called a theist. However, he later said, the mystery of the beginning of all things is insoluble by us, and I, for one, must be content to remain an agnostic. After that, though, however, Darwin eventually faded from his spiritual considerations, as he said, I can indeed hardly see how anyone ought to wish Christianity to be true, for it is so plain language, sorry, for if the if so, the plain language of the text seems to show that the men who do not believe, and this would include my father, brother, and almost all my best friends, would be everlastingly punished, and this is a damnable doctrine. I was very unwilling to give up my belief, but I found it more and more difficult with free scope giving to my imagination to invent evidence which would suffice to convince me. Thus, this belief crept over me at a very slow rate, but was at last complete. On April 19th, 8082, sorry, 1882, Darwin died. Um, that's it. Thank you. Wow, wow. Can we all give him a, a thumbs up, a pause? Wow. How much time you prepare for that? Uh, it's a great job. Thank you for, for doing that. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Okay. Wow. Only 10th grade. 
I hope you learned a lot from this. Actually, he was able to cover what I want to share. That's that's great. Okay, again, welcome to our week three of the now how should we live? If you could still change your screen name, okay, to follow this, right, with the age code, name, and the state. So later on in the breakout room, we can easier to know who you are, okay, where you're from. Maybe you can find some long lost uh, friends, whatever, okay. And uh, I, we're going to just let a computer do the breakout room. I think that's much easier, right? Human being, we have limitation. <laughs> Okay, if you're the first time here, that's what we got try to do. We just have a student presentation, a lecture, and then a breakout room, and we come back for main discussion. And today I have a, a special guest. Okay. Oh, if you want to join by FB, all right, that's the, the call for FB. All right, I hope you got the book, and I really that's uh, encouraged to use this opportunity of we learning this, go read through this book, all right? The book is much uh, more detailed, much more information. We cannot cover this uh, in, in 10 weeks. And it's going to be a great read. All right, this is our schedule here. Wow, pretty soon, one more week, then we're going to have a Chinese New Year break, right? If you want to get the certificate, all right, that's the, that's the requirements. All right, let's repeat these questions. What are the four basic questions of the worldview? Who can answer me? Turn the mic on, you can say. The creation. Yeah. All, re huh. all. Mm -hmm. uh, resurrection. Redemption. 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 And the last one. All. Redemption. After redemption. False condemnation. Restoration. Yeah. Okay. Remember this four thing. Okay. Creation, for redemption, and restoration. All right. So we are we're going to go through creation now. Okay. First two lecture is just introduction. Now we're going to go through this. All right. So where are we from? Who, who we are? But today I'm going to make this as like the battle for the beginning. It, the battle for the beginning. Um, did everybody read about this chapter, the trip to Disney? Uh, I did. How, how, okay. okay, can you share a little bit what what's most, what you learned from the chapter? Uh, no, example, uh, most, kids, most kids these days are fed like a naturalist Mm. worldview so yeah. when they're confronted with a christian worldview they push it off not believing it because at a young age they were taught the naturalist worldview wow well, what grade are you in e? e yeah what grade sixth grade six oh wow very good only sixth grade praise the lord okay uh also very good for parents to read, okay? I really encourage everyone to read this story. The, the good thing I like about Chuck Colson's book is that within this uh, lecture or whatever, he put in very fascinating stories, all right? And I think every movie, every story can make it to a movie. So, um, and, and when I first read that book, I really touched me and said, wow, I never thought about going to Disney or confronted by this, right? We all like to go to Disney, right? Actually, now I, I stopped going to, to Disney. But before, when I was married, I even say to my wife, say, can we spend some day in Disney for our honeymoon, all right? But now you know that when you go to Disney, you watch this film, do see all this, actually you're fed by this naturalism. And uh, I remember the, the, the Katie that the daughter said, it's just that I don't want to be so different and I don't have to be. That's the challenge we have because if we don't believe in evolution, we'll be different. But the more important is, uh, is that's the truth, right? 
And the Bible said, the fool say in his heart, there is no God. That's a problem, right? Evolution just say, that's no God. Okay, can someone read this for me? Uh, who, okay, uh, Grace, oh, okay. Uh, Grace, can you read this for me? Uh, me? Yeah, or yeah, you. Romans 119, for what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made. So they are without excuse for although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them to gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. Okay. Yes, I'm not a scientist. I'm the pastor. I'm the Bible believers. Yes, we can use Bible to view everything. Okay. So that's what we tried to do. And God already showed here that his invisible attribute, namely his eternal power and divine nature, has been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world, all right? And we, without excuse, all right? Okay, uh, we're gonna look into a little bit. I think probably you all know this very well because you go to school, learn all this stuff. Naturism. Naturism, scientists, scientists, uh, scientists try to give the impression that they are fair, okay? And objective. You all hear this, right? The science is objective, right? And um, but religion is subjective, all right. So, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, right? That's what Bible said. But the counterfeit on this is, in the beginning, the cosmos. And that's this is very popular. This idea by Carl Sagan. Uh, probably most of you, you don't know him because he's already passed away. But he was very popular in the, on the TV. You look up, you just Google it a little bit. He has a, this TV theory and every time he come up, the beginning thing is he, he stand by the beach, look at the ocean, look at the star, and he's proclaiming the cosmos is all that is, or ever was, or ever will be. Wow, sounds like a pastor, right? And he said, we are, in the most profound sense, children of the cosmos. And his, his uh, TV series is it, popularized, watched by many, many people. And of course, now we all learn in, in, the, in the school. Even in the children's book. Have you ever read this book? Bill Stand, Bill's book? Do you have that at home? I've read, I've read like wow. a... a we, we, we those things are good. I we <laughs> love to read the bears and bears. Yeah, it's not this one. I've never heard of this one. Actually. But you see that is this one even a book? Yeah. Okay. So. Like, okay. Okay. Bears and bears. Like, the best. I don't think this one it was ever All published. Right. Okay. Turn it off now. Okay. All right. Now I'm gonna just, uh, let you talk when I say. Okay. All right. It's all that is when was you see even children's book. Okay. And of course, now you are here. That's good. I'm glad so many children are here. All right. So what I try to say is that the Bible is not Bible versus science. It's worldview versus worldview. It's religion versus religion. Okay, we're going to look into this. All right. Okay. Let me ask you, okay. All the evidence, nature, animals, people, and fossil. I only exist in when? Let me let me see. All right. If this is a fossil, okay. This exists in in the what? Past. Past. Any other? Exists in the present. Present. Why? Because it is. <laughs> because I'm holding it, right? Because I'm holding it, yes, okay, in the presence, okay? 
and that's how you a question how you interpret that this thing if I say this is fossil okay so we're gonna today I will special wear this blue glass blue like glass people say this will protect your eyes when you look at the screen okay so we need to wear the right glasses to view the fossil or view the evidence all right so we're going to learn starting from secular or oh, last week people didn't say well, what's secularism okay secular means they no god okay you just view it from the view without god okay and then the biblical history view all right so we're going to look at how the probably you will know it well but i just want to point out uh, some uh, problem with that thank for just just this just talk about this right i believe all the life on earth evolved over millions of years from a few common ancestors right you all know this but you, i just want to he said i believe okay and in, in the charcoal book said darwin was first committed to the philo philosophy of naturalism and then saw a theory to justify it scientifically okay you see that you all know the scientists that they, they also need to have a pre-assumption first and then find they try to develop a, a formula a theory or a, in the lab to try to prove it so he did the same thing he first already committed i want to find uh a reason okay let me ask so for example jacob where are you from why are you on earth because God created me as no, a... no, 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 don't say about God yet. Just, uh, I'm not asking for that. Just why you could be born on this earth. Uh, because, uh, because God wanted us, I guess. Because your mom and dad, right? Well, yeah. Okay, I'm not... <laughs> Without your mom and dad, you won't be here, right? You won't be born, right? But if I say... Jacob, why you you are on this earth? But tell me the reason. But can I say it's because of your mom and dad? Woo. That's the you, you got it? He had this pre-assumption, right? He just he wanted to explain anything, but just no God. Okay? Just like Jacob, let me know why you're here, but just don't tell you is your don't talk about your mom and dad, alright? Okay. So we don't, I don't need to repeat this, but I want to, okay. There's two type of evolution. One is called macro evolution, one is called micro evolution, right? What's the difference? What's the difference? Macro evolution. One is like macro evolution, evolution. and like one is like G G. Ma macro evolution is when like different species turn into another species, mm -hmm. and micro evolution is that animals within the same species develop mm. differently. Yeah, that's why we have different breeds of dogs, but in the end, they're all still dogs. Okay, very. That will make more sense. Very good. Okay. So I just wanted to let you know th there are two types of evolution we talk about. And as a Christian, yeah, of course, we can observe this micro evolution. We believe on this. Yeah. Okay. That this, but they still just different dog, different type of dog, but they were coming from one dog to change to other species. But I just want to tell you once I have a conversation with a, a non believers, he is Harvard graduate PhD in science. And I was talking, he said, he also told me he doesn't believe in macro evolution. He believes in micro evolution. So I just wanted to let you know, not every, not every scientist, not every people, even non-believer, they believe in evolution. Okay? He is a Harvard you know, like, Okay? All right? The second one is actually true because like you can't crossbreed dogs into a new uh, one. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's actually possible. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, oh, when we have at the end, when you have the Q and A, then you talk. Okay, then you ask. Okay, I'm just disco about nature. Okay, nature. Okay, then we just yeah. So we can, we need to define what is evolution. Okay, this is many many years ago. So me. Okay, so and you know that evolution started from one single cell, right? So how the one single cell be, can become me? How? 
Okay, now you can you can answer the question. How a single cell can melt? Oh. Evolution. How? What's the what's the evolution talking about? Two things or oh, three things. First, two things. Uh, natural selection and variation. A mutation, right? A mutation. Okay, and for this to happen, what what will you take? For natural selection and mutation to to happen from this, what what the third element? Well, well, Time, 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 very time. Time. time, okay, and lots of time, oh, millions of years, right? So without time, do we observe anything this happen in our eyes to see this single no. cell become oh. No, right? No. Yeah, so the secret weapon of evolution is time. I don't see that, but say if I just give you say, oh, that's a million years. The, oh, maybe okay. So John Mike Arthur, the the uh, a past the pastor said, time is a hero of all the evolution theories. Without this millions of year, nothing going to work. Okay, and even actually the truth is, even with a million years, it still won't work. But just like if they put this in, and you guys, like, oh, oh, maybe they just put a possibility, and yeah. then they can't even prove it. Okay. So if according to evolution, how old is the universe? Uh, it's like, I, I... 600 million. Mm. It's, I think it was... Uh, okay. 6, 000, 000. 30. 30. It's 13.8 yeah. billion. Okay, how about Earth? How about Earth? 4 billion. 4 billion. Yeah. 4, 5 yeah. billion. Okay, very oh, good. 4, 1, 5 billion. Okay. And uh, I, I just move on. And the, about four billions of years ago, the life first appeared on the earth. And the human, okay, if you feel this. Pastor Wendy, you muted yourself. Okay. Are they suddenly muted like everybody and then. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, now you mute it. Okay, my turn now. Okay, so you see. With all the billions, not millions, of billions of years, and this is, whoa, they may be possible. So this is a secret weapon of evolutions. Without time, it's not going to work. And honest, of course, with time, still won't work. Okay. And that's why I'm so glad that uh, Justice mentioned about that the term uh, inifolism. But opposite to that is that catastrophism. Oh, okay. That means the the Earth was largely being shaped by sudden, short, light, violent event, possibly worldwide in scope. What is that? No ice broad. Okay, and there's a, something dramatic happened to the whole Earth. Another one that said, no, is mm, assume the same natural law and process that operate in the universe now always. So this is a great faith for billions of years. Mm, it's all no disaster happen. We're just going to have a snowstorm coming, right? Can you say every year the same, right? No way, okay? But that's uh, the theory behind this evolution. For evolution to work, you gotta believe that in the past, the neighbor, this is the whatever things in the nature is, is operate in the universe now have always operated in the universe, the past and prior, everywhere in the universe. It's fixed, okay? I'll give you an example. All right. So this guy, James Hutton, he's a founder of modern geology, all right? He presented this idea, all right? Well, he wanted to see how old it, the Earth is. And so his student, Charles Lyell, uh, wrote this book, Principle of Geology, to, to, to say that the, the, the world is the very, very, the Earth, the earth is very old, okay? with this uh, uh, uniformism. And you know, he said, the goal is to free the science from Moses. So same thing, they want to kick God out. So they want to create a theory of that. And you know what, Charles Darwin took his book on to his trip. So you see, this idea of 
our evolution or all this, it's not just like, wow, they, they find out, they already have this idea of it. So how do you define it? How do you find it's millions a year? How? By carbon dating, right? That's how to define. Is Suchi here? It's my Suchi, are you here? Suchi? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, I have a physics professor coming to explain this carbon dating for you guys. Okay, so that's okay. So <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you. I have actually recorded the PowerPoint because I want to limit the time, so it's more most efficient. Uh, can I can I share my screen? Sure, go I, ahead. Uh, yeah, but but I cannot. So the host is uh, um, disabled participant. Okay, uh, Lijin, can you allow Suchi to share? Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, Suchi so, is a physics PhD, and uh, she she lives in San Diego now. Okay, thank you. So I just uh, play the recording. I just talk. oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity to share with you um, mm -hmm. about radiometric dating, or often called radioactive dating. It is a technique used to determine the age of materials, such as rocks or biological materials. The best known radiometric dating techniques include the radiocarbon dating or carbon-14 and uranium lead dating. So different, uh, different methods of radiometric dating are accurate over different time scales and also used for different materials. We know that atom is composed of nucleus and electrons. Some nuclei are stable and unstable, uh, unstable nuclides can decay, that is, they are radioactive, and eventually producing a stable nuclides after many decays. We call the original nuclide parent, and we call the decay products daughters. Unstable nuclei decay, however, some nuclides decay faster than others. The time in which half of the original number of nuclei decay is defined as the half life. So suppose there's the original number of nuclei and half of the remaining nuclei would decay in the next half life. So after one half life, it goes down to half of the original number. And then after, another half-life, it go down to another half of this number, which is one-fourth of the original number, and so on. Suppose the original number of nuclei present um, at the time zero is n naught, and then at a later time t, the number of this same nuclei can be expressed as n equals n naught times e, to the power of minus lambda t, where lambda is the decay constant and is related to the half-life of this particular nuclei. Here, a very important presumption is that this half-life is a constant over the whole decay process of time t. In my opinion, this is very difficult to confirm. Uh, you're muted. We can't hear it. Oh. Uh, okay. So, uh, wait, 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 wait. How can I do it? Uh, you just talk. It's okay. <laughs> okay. We don't okay. understand any of it. So, yeah, you can just talk. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. so, this is like chemistry advanced. Be yeah, patient, so, be patient. Yeah. So Our I think the basic the, um, Okay, okay, be silent. Okay, okay, don't the care. The development of radiocarbon dating has had a profound impact on archaeology, often described as the radiocarbon revolution. It can be used to date biological tissues. Here is a picture of um, how an atom of carbon 14 decay into an atom of nitrogen 14. 
during which one of the um, neutron in the carbon atom become a proton in this nitrogen atom. If we know the original number and current number of the nitrogen atoms, as well as the current number of the carbon um, in, uh, in material, and given the decay constant lambda, which can be calculated from this half-life of the decay process, we will be able to use this equation to get the time t, and that is how old uh, the material is. Or if we know the original number of the carbon atoms and also the current number, we could also use this equation to get the time t. However, the only quantity we could measure are the current number of carbon and nitrogen. We could only guess for the original number of nitrogen and carbon, but um, that's just a guess. And also we can measure the half-life of this process and get the decay constant lambda, but I don't think the scientists have any clue whether this half-life would change during a long pre a period of time. Regarding the age of Earth, scientists use the decay of uranium to date the rocks and find the oldest rock possible. And this decay process is kind of complicated. It will go through many processes and finally decay into lead. The half-life of uranium is this much, uh, 4.5 billion years. And in principle, we can, again, use the same equation uh, to get the age of the rock, T. However, um, it's the same idea that this uh, half-life might change during the long process. So in summary, I would say the radioactive dating is a very good try that scientists have made to determine the absolute ages of different materials or even the earth. But we would always um, have to bear in mind uh, the possible uncertainties and limitations in the scientific method. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Wow, thank you, thank you, Sushi. Yeah, so uh, I have a simple version of uh, uh, oh, I need to get my get my PowerPoint back. Uh, do you see my PowerPoint? I need to be be sure. No. Again. Okay. Let me be sure. Need my... to share. Okay. Do you see now? Coming up. Yeah. Okay. Let's give uh Professor Sushi a big pause. Okay. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, you may not, I, you, you may not, okay, you may not understand everything if you're too young. But I, I, I don't have PhD degree. I give the simple one. Okay, I give a simple one. All right. Who know cut? To, for example, if you come in and see, I'm, I'm peeling the apple. Okay. All right. And you observe me. It's a pear. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, oh, okay. Assume it's apple. Okay. Uh, it, it observe me that. Uh, oh, I. Sh I peel this in one minute for one apple, okay? One minute. And you saw a basket already 19 apples been peeled. How long I been there? 19 minutes. You have to put it inside. You have to put the, you have to put the apples inside. Oh. No, I already peeled one and then there's 19 it. more. That's how many minutes I peel oh, one. Twenty. 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 Okay, makes sense, right? Very scientific. Okay, that's a problem now. That's a problem now. How do you know when I peel this earlier? How what's the speed? Maybe when I do it at the beginning, I don't know how to do it. So I took me five minutes to peel one, right? Or Maybe when I do it very quick, I do it very quick. When you see me do this, I'm very tired. So you got my idea now? You just assume this in the past, but you don't see it. You don't know. But when you assume this and you start to make this, looks very scientific. You provide a theory, but would that theory 
is a reality. We don't know. You got it? Okay, that's my simple version of, of what Professor Shichi said. Okay? All right. All right, let me ask you another question. What is missing? What's missing? Okay. All right. Uh, the two lines that connect the circles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I give you choice. What is missing? A, B, C, D. Okay. I thought B. It Anyone say A? B. 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 Okay. B. A, 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 A. Okay, stop. Stop. B. Okay. All right, when I say stop, stop. Okay. When, right, when I say stop, just mute it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So actually, nothing is missing because it was thrown at this way. Ah, it was you all tricked by me, all right? I draw this way. I just say what's missing. Actually, nothing's missing, and that's what is. What is a missing link? Nothing. Okay, you always see this, right? And and the evolution is try to find a missing link, but nothing missing. It's always there. All right. So, just God created is not by this way. All right. Okay, we gotta move on quick. So I wanted this, this, uh, this two type of science. One we call operational science. That's what we Christian can do. We can build airplane, we can build phone, we build car because they can duplicate in the lab. Okay, everybody, be, but another type is historical science. Talk about past. Nobody know there. Okay, nobody was there. So they just need to use this idea evolution. Say, oh, how it came from? But you cannot produce in the lab. All right. So Science and religion cannot come from, he said, because the, the deal different things. Science is about facts, while religious struggle is human. But, okay, I want to show you we can deal with, uh, maybe I should skip this, but I'll do it quickly, okay? So that's evolution view, the secular na nature, okay? But then uh, we say, oh, God create, but there's still quite a few different view of creation, uh, creationism, all right? Um, First, 24 hours. Of course, I believe in this because the Bible said. But many Christians also believe in figuratively, okay? They believe in 4.5 billion still. Why? Why? Is it because they, they knew some insight from the Bible? No, because they assume evolution is truth. And now they look at the Bible. Uh oh, I have a problem now. I need to fit millions into the Bible so that they. Is not 24 hours. Okay. And another one we call gap theory. They said the oh, verse one and two, that's a that's a big problem there that God recreated. So what we read is recreation. Okay. I'll just point out there's something there. Alright, there's a big gap from between verse one and verse two we call gap theory. Not now it's not that popular, but during the the, the before is nineteen seventeen this study bible, he that's what I got it from the study Bible. So uh, many people try to use this way to reconcile, right? This evolution. Oh, another one, even more clever. He said that, they said that God used evolution to create, to, to, to do things. Wow, you can have both. Sounds good, right? But even evolution say, evolution is first, there's no God. But unfortunately, uh, many, this is a very famous scientist, Francis Collins, he's a uh, map the G DNA. He wrote this book, the language of God, and he promoted this idea. All right. Another one called intelligent design. Uh, probably you heard about this. Uh, you, you see the watch uh, from the from the beach. You will know that you you say this is not just evolved, right? It's, but someone designed it. But unfortunately, he just said intelligent. So this could refer to any God. Okay, just intelligent. All right. All right. Okay, let's quickly look at biblical view. All right. Now this is our practice. Okay, we're going to use this case. You're going to think everything through the Bible. All right. We from this from this from this, from this class. That's what we're going to practice. Okay. When you see anything, you want to see. Where the idea of original from, all right, and how does that fit on the, the Bible, all right? So that's how we're going to practice. Why six day? Why why we said the 
universe created in six days. Why? Why not millions of years? Why not millions of years? Because because the Bible tells us. Because Bible says so, right? It's not like I I want to do it. God can do it in one day. God can do it in one second. But He decided to use to to do it this way. Okay, so how can you Wait, fit me into all this day? That's we try to right. Uh, I don't want to give you a Bible quiz. We all you all learn this about it, six days. Okay, day one, day two, day three. Hey, who is doing this? Jesse, why are you doing this? Can you not play with trick? Okay, Jesse. All right. So especially you see this day, the morning, the evening. All right, evening and morning, even morning. Then, if you just pray to read it, you know that's talk about a day, right? Not millions of year. Yes, the day called Yom in Hebrew. Sometimes it means, sometimes it means a period of time, just like Second Peter. But when you use it in twenty four hours, you know that's not a not a mini, not a thousand year, all right? Where we get the idea for a week? Where we get it from? That's only from the, the Bible. Bible. Only from the Bible. You see that? Where we get the idea from the week? You can, you know, the the day, one day, the the month, year is all about this rotation, right? But where we get the idea of the week? That's from the Bible. You know, the Ten Commandments said for in six days all right that's another hint or right, another proof not just in genesis when god get israelites that ten commandments the reason why you need to observe the sabbath is because god created in six days and make heaven earth and the sea so you see god repeated that god create all this in six days and interesting, I look into this. Even you know the, the people, human beings try to change the the seven days week. Okay, French Revolution they want to change it oh, ten days, and then the Russia they change the five days, six days. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. And they they don't. They all back to seven days a week. And this is the verse why I cannot reconcile with millions of years. Okay, for many Christians they believe in millions of years. This here is a problem. If we see everything from Bible, where does death come from? The deaths come from sin, from particular here say one man. Okay, all right, boys and girls. You see, actually it's Eve did that right, but Adam is a head. So Bible said one man through Adam's sin, sin comes in and death comes in. So if you say all this means you means like fossil. All this, then how can how are you gonna explain this? That means before Adam sinned, that's already there, and how it, then that's we cannot uh, match all this what Bible said in the Romans. Especially God said everything was very good. Okay. Uh, can someone mute that? It's good. Okay, thank you. All right. So this is a challenge every time when we see something that match the Bible. Whether you're going to cut the Bible or you're going to see what the Bible said. All right. And we see that many times in our history. Whenever you see the Bible is not not kind of uh, not match, then you're going to change the Bible. Or we're going to stick with the Word of God and then to see the world. Okay, I'm going to quickly uh this fossil where's the fossil from fossil is that stuff and it got to happen very very quick all right so noah's flood actually can explain fossil because they not just rain you see the fountain of the great deep burst forth so it's earthquake cover water and then cover a lot of death animal and that's why you can find the fossil in the very high mountain how can the, the 
and the sea animal. How can the sea animal go up to the high mountain? And with the、uh, evolutionists, they say like the Earth changed. Yeah. A long so, time. So I just want to present another different view. Okay. Then you, I just want to show you Noah's flood. Not is not just a story. It's not just、uh, oh we learned it in Sunday school story. You can use this to explain all these things. Explain the fossil. All right. You see all the fossil everywhere. That's the Noah's flood can can explain this. Okay, Grand Canyon is another great example. When you go to Grand Canyon, you will say, "Oh, this is a millions of years, right?" So they can see all these things. This millions, of, I was there. Was amazing. But who says so? In 1980, Mount this is a volcano erupt in the Mount、uh, St. Helen, and wow, that's what happened. They see the the volcano erupt. And this happened in what? In few hours, okay. All right, now it's fun part. Dinosaur. I'll kind of give you a.、Uh, if you know what type of dinosaur, let me know, okay. What type of dinosaur is it? Tyrannosaurus. 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 John Cena. T Rex. Godzilla. Oh. King Kong. What's my T Rex? Stegosaurus. How about this? Stegosaurus. Spatia. Triceratops. 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 Okay. All right. What's this? Brachiosaurus. Can you just let us put the answer in chat? It's kind of noisy. Source is the. Okay. I don't have time. I don't have time. Yeah. What's this? Plesiosaur. Plesiosaur. Okay. Yeah, right. You guys all stink. The Velociraptor. All right. Okay. Thank you for your answer. All right. Okay. Because of time, we gotta move on very quick. Okay. So, dinosaur. How do we explain the dinosaur? Okay. Oh, this is T Rex. Oh, why is it here? All right. You know, evolution. We talk about. Oh, it's millions of years ago. Okay, so whenever you see millions, you gotta raise a hand. Excuse me, were you there? Okay, were you there? You said twenty one millions. You gotta raise a hand. Were you there? But no, I just don't really raise a hand in your school. Okay, I don't want you to fail in the class. Okay, but just in your heart, you said were you there? Nobody there, but God was there. God said, "This is a God asked Job, 'Were you there when I laid the foundation of the earth?'" Ah, okay. I'm gonna use extend a little bit more time today for lecture. Okay, ten more minutes. All right. So, did dinosaur live with men? Look at this. Yes. This, dinosaurs live with men. This is found in the Indian、no. cave. Okay, they found it in Indian. Is it called right dinosaurs? Oh, you see that? I envy them. Back、I、then. Okay.、Oh. Okay. Mute it. Mute it. Mute it. Okay. Back then, you see, there's another one. Wow, they don't have a camera. They don't have. How do they know to draw something like this? We don't see this now. Looks like dinosaur, right? And even this one. Ooh, they found it in the Indian cave. So they got to assume that hey, they must saw dinosaur before. And if you go to Europe, you see this sculpture everywhere, right? It is that. How old is it? Okay, all right. How old is it? All right, we don't have time. And the teeth, they find that dinosaur bone inside has some like red tissue. If you said millions years ago, then how can they still have this? Okay, just I just show you some, uh, these type of things that、um, we don't have. And you say, oh, Bible doesn't have a name dinosaur, but this name dinosaur. Is created by Richard Owen in 1841. It means terrible lizard. That's why Chinese say 恐龙 Okay, but the King James Bible is published in 1611. So you don't see the dinosaur in. The, but unfortunately, uh, they still didn't change them. I I just didn't know about this. Okay. They use the word dragon. So yeah, yeah, Chinese say dragon. So the Bible.、Oh, you see the it's a dinosaur in the Bible. Is Bible、yeah. talk about dinosaur? Leviathan and behemoth. Yeah. Behemoth. In the jaw 
chapter 40, verse 15. Behold, Fatima. And you look at the Chinese, they call, they call the Hippa. <laughs> they change the Hema. Isn't that interesting? The Chinese, they don't know what's Behema. So he, the, the, if you look at the Chinese Bible, they say Hema. Oh. But they describe... He's having a breath, yes. You see that? He said he makes his tail stiff like a cedar. All right. Okay. Then there's a, what's a cedar? What's cedar tree? You're frozen. This is sea cedar tree. Solomon it's used really cedar tree to build. You're frozen. Also, I can't start my camera. Okay. I can't start my camera. It says you stopped it. Okay. Please silent your camera. It says your video. Stopped it as well. Okay. All right. Don't say no. Don't no. So don't open your microphone now, okay? All right. So this biggest animal is oh is it is it a tail like cedar tree? No, right? Ah, he but doesn't look like the, the the tail like cedar tree, right? Okay. So, it is. So this is a tail of like cedar tree. Let's try this. Ah, uh, doesn't look like right. Yes, it does. How about this? Yeah, it does. <laughs> How about this? Whoa! Yeah. You see yeah. that? So the behemoth may be some type of dinosaur. And that's another one. so that, happy. The vehicle. <laughs> the vehicle. Okay. So I just give you some some uh, sample on the Bible. In the Bible, they talk about something like dinosaur. Okay. And uh, I encourage you to look at the answers in Genesis. A lot of, they have produced a lot of information about all these questions. And we were there before in Kentucky. Uh, we went to the, they have a creation museum, right? They have an ark, okay? I wish I can go there again. It's so much fun to visit that. Okay? Hey, is this it? Wait, I have, a, I have a, a quick question. Is this in Kentucky? Yes, in Kentucky. But that's Kentucky. Yeah. Yes, I went there before. Okay. We went there. Two years ago. It was so fun. Okay. All right. We saw okay. all these dinosaurs. Maybe after this class, we can all go. Okay. I'll organize a tour. Okay. I, I'm a, I have a free membership. Okay. <laughs> but you need to pay. All right. So I'm going to conclude this. Why? Why we need to learn about this? Because the origin determines, determines destiny. Our origin determines our destiny. It tells us who we are, why we are here, and how we should order our lives together in society. Our view of origin shaped our understanding of ethic, law, education, and yes, even sexuality. And that's why we see it in our view, in our life, in our society now. You see? You want to base on the word of God, it's creation, or you want to base on man's opinion, evolution. If you go on evolution, that's the path. This is the path. If you go on the creation of the word of God, this is the path. So the foundation is going to determine the beginning of this, going to determine where we get ended. And why we need to start from the, uh, creation or evolution? Because that's the foundation. And we see all this are uh, just symptom. Too often we just fight the symptom, but we don't fight the bottom here. Right? And so when we be, don't believe in creation, you see so many people, ah, oh, that's just a figurative, that's a tale. We just believe in Jesus. Boom. Then we lost the we lost the, the authority to speak any of those issues. Because if God create the he, all this, then he owned it. Then his user guy is is our user guy, not man's. Right. So naturalism claims that God did not create us; rather, is we create the idea of God. All right. And this has been this idea of, of evolution in every way, especially education. You know, Dewey, he used the evolution and produced this programmatic philosophy in education. All right. And Rich Token put down and make it possible to be an intellectual, fulfilled atheist. All right. A the evolution provide a foundation. 
Oh, it's Darwin's reign in our school. I missed, missed something. Okay, yeah. Darwin won not so much because it fit the evidence, but because it would provide a scientific rational for naturalism. Sounds like, right? You remember the shash peeled in apple? An honest debate between Darwinism and Christianity is not fact versus faith, but philosophy versus philosophy, worldview versus worldview. We must be clear about what is at stake. As long as Darwinism reigns in our school and elite culture, the Christian worldview will be considered the man woman in the attic. Right? You're going to be laughed at. Oh, you believe in creation? We have been laughing at. Irrational and believable. That's why we can no longer allow naturalists to treat science as a sanctuary where their personal philosophy reigns free from challenge. So we believe in operational science. Those evolution that's covered our past is just a philosophy. Okay, an idea. All right, so that's the. Uh, can you uh, take a picture of these two questions? All right, you're going to do it in your breakout room. Why is Darwin's chat dangerous? Is a dangerous idea? How do you see this in our culture? Why is creationism the foundation of Christianity? How does that impact your academic study and how you live? Okay, got it? So 